Hello and welcome to the Net Events EMEA Press and Analyst Summit held in sunny Rome. One of the chief guest speakers at the event was Greg Fitzgerald, Chief Strategy and Communications Manager for Silence, a security company. Not only did he talk about his company and its products, he delivered a live demo of how his products defeat malware. He started by talking about his heritage in the industry. So I think where we start today is interesting because I'm going to talk about an industry perspective over that time and then over the past 15 years I've been a part of how security has transformed itself. And what we take a look at is that everything we've talked about today culminates in security being three ways. One, cyber attacks. I'm worried about data loss, business disruption, damage. I'm also worried about privacy, personal information, where it is, where it resides, and where it goes. We can also think of one more level, which is regulation. And that particular area is a serious concern because, like I mentioned in the panel, regulation of being compliant with PCI or in America HIPAA or any other compliance means nothing if you're not actually protecting yourself, right? These are just check boxes to make someone happy. So what I want to show you today is going to be interesting, because I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to show you a live cyber attack in front of your eyes. I've never done it before in front of the press or analyst. I typically have done this in front of a, a customer prospect. It is unrehearsed. I do know it works. Hopefully, we will all pray to the demo gods. The objective that I want to show you is that the market within security is fundamentally broken. He then talked about the various types of cyber attacks, how sophisticated and wide-ranging they have become, and how antivirus products from the three big security vendors, Symantec, Trend Micro and McAfee, are not fit for purpose. And then it was straight into the live demo. So what I'm doing is I'm going to hit a button that is going to download from those publicly available websites a random sample of malware of 100 pieces and it's going to take it and it is going to automatically run against these devices when it's ready. So let's do this. I am going to download. So it is now downloading and preparing. So it's just doing uh, what I could show you individually. Um, this is obviously to shrink the time here. And once it says go, what I'm gonna do is, is hit another button and it's going to run. You're gonna see little black boxes, which are command line interfaces on each one of these devices that is going through each one of the pieces of malware serially in order, and we're just going to see what happens. I have no idea if ours is going to have mistakes or issues either, but I can guarantee that the other guys probably will. All right, we're ready. Now, I have one disclaimer. When we do this, because it is malware, remember these are bad people, I don't know what could happen. It could, we could have a naked picture, uh, we could have uh, um, systems shut down, um, we get crypto locker every once in a while or, or ransomware, and, and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to hit the button here, go. All right, so what is happening? Okay, this one didn't trigger, so I apologize, I'm not sure why. Uh, but at least we'll look at what Symantec and, and Trend Micro are gonna do, is that it's running through each one of those. Now any item that pops up means that it missed a cyber attack. Okay? Now I just updated it, right? They should know what is going on. What we then saw was a failure of all three main antivirus products to fully protect the demo machine. I, of course, want to show you our product, which is Silence Protect. And what it is showing, which is out of the hundred files, you can't see it, it's still processing, I think uh, 96, 98? I think it says 98, I have to look at it, sorry. We found two abnormal, and then everything else we found and safe. This computer is not locked up, right? This particular computer, which, which may analyze the exact same data, is right here at Google. And I believe Wi-Fi still works, and we'll just go to. So the point here is that it did stop the malware that went down here uh, in terms of what they, we found. OK, you can see all these unsafe items that were found. Now, let's get back to the presentation and why that's important is if we look at what is happening in the industry today, we have run this test across the United States and Australia 75 times, which is why, yes, it's a test, but I was relatively confident I knew it was going to happen. 
The reason is, is we've shown that a new model, a new approach to a massive problem through innovation is changing and disrupting the market significantly. So think about it, $5 billion market, you got a small little company like Silence, we're based in Southern California, we're 350 employees, and we're about $100 million US revenue, and we're growing incredibly fast. We're only three years old. We're growing faster than Facebook, Palo Alto Networks, FireEye, as a small little antivirus company. He then discussed the flaws in the standard antivirus technologies, mainly to do with signature detection, and about the legal and financial repercussions for companies who don't protect themselves and their employees from malware. So what's the challenge, right? We actually have two battlefields. One is the cyber actors. I mentioned earlier, there's starting to be a very significant stratification between who's attacking you and how they're doing it and what they want to do with it. For example, we have nation state attacks. I mentioned China, North Korea, Iran, Russia. Um, those are the obvious you know, anti-ally uh, uh, countries, but realistically, location means nothing. Fitzgerald went on to talk about how widespread and well-organized malware attackers are, and then talked about some of the organizational challenges. What we also have on the other side is internal challenges, like I mentioned, bureaucracy. Think about it. We just talked about an IT department has control issues. <laughs> like everybody in my company is a control freak. And we're just a vendor, right? We're trying to sell other control freaks. And it is a very difficult proposition because they think they can dictate the behavior of their employees. But as we just heard in the panel previously, that is shifted 180 degrees. And now the IT, if they think that, are totally in denial. You've got budgets that are always very sensitive. And yes, a large piece of the IT budget, but security is still somewhere between 5 and 8%. That's it, right, of your total IT budget. The last piece, of course, is behaviors, and I think we all agree it's tough to change human behavior, right? That takes centuries. Uh, that is a major issue. So behavior is a problem that we deal with internally. So I take a disruptive and a different turn than what the industry has changed. So people go, you know what? We're just going to get attacked. To me, that is a losing proposition. Like, that's just a bad attitude, right? That's like someone's going to punch me in the face, so just go ahead and do it now. There, the idea is we should punch back, right? Because the attackers are no other, are just bad people. They're like bullies. That's really what they are, right? Do you succumb to a bully? No. You, try to, you have to stand up at some point in your life or else you'll always be run over. So the idea is we, really good security people get aggressive. They get in the offensive. That is prevention. The second thing is they have a process. They just go, don't go, hey, when we get attacked, I'll figure out what we do next. There's always a process and they follow the process. If they can do that, they can actually stop the attack quickly and, uh, and prevent the damage that's going on. When we look at security products, and this is, I'm gonna transition because we're talking about innovation. You always talk about next new, right? What's next gen? That word is annoying, but we use it, frankly. Why? Because people just understand it. Like, what is silence? We're a next generation antivirus. Wow, to me as a marketer, that's very limiting. To what we actually do, we are much broader than that, okay? But it's basically to lower your risk over time. So we talk about um, this, this particular element, is that no matter what you do, realistically, security in itself, not privacy, security is a risk game. It's insurance, to be honest. That's all it is. It's a matter of what am I going to lose by someone gaining access? And that is where you, the company is starting to figure out how much do they spend, how much effort do they put forth, how much imposition on the end users they put relative to the risk of the organization. So a good, comp a good product uh, needs to be uh, reduced risk. Fitzgerald highlighted Silence's approach, which is about prevention, and then explained how Silence makes it happen. What's a little known secret is that in the antivirus industry, we share the signatures. Okay, we all have kind of little research groups, but the reality is, after we get a little advantage, maybe a week or two weeks, we share those inf that, that information with everybody else for the goodness of the industry. So the reality is, it kind of doesn't matter what vendor you have, right? I just showed you that the variability is different for every single vendor in the industry. Unless you look at a new approach, and this is the only little advertising I have, which is 
there's an artificial intelligence approach which is actually using the modernization of cloud and large data analytics that is literally only, pa only uh, possible in the past five years thanks to Amazon Web Services. In particular, Amazon Web Services is what we use. We're using the compilation of 10,000 simultaneous machines to do computational analysis of the features of malicious software. So think about this. I can now, just like I do in an airport, when I walk into the airport, if I'm fidgety and I'm kind of sweating it out, what do the security people do? They're probably going to pull me aside and at least have a conversation, right, to see if there's anything else. That's even before I go through the metal detector and all the other elements. That's prevention. And the idea is, can you actually do it? It's a very hard thing to do, but it's one where innovation and uh, cloud capabilities are being used to enable new technology approaches. So as I just kind of summarize it, we've got the past, which was pre-execution. Like I said, stop it, but there are humans involved. There's been about 15 years of technology that have built to say, find it faster, okay? That's great. You have to. Nothing's perfect, right? There's no silver bullet. But you need to get to a point where you can actually prevent it from, the, uh, from the, uh, the very beginning, but not involve the human error. Because the volume of attacks is very high. The moderation of uh, mutations and, and variability of them is very high. And physically, no human can keep up with it all. So the last piece that just summarizes the way the industry is, is there are two primary choices in life. To accept the conditions as they are, or accept the responsibility for changing them. And what I think you're going to see over the next couple of years here is a, a massive transformation in the style of protection, the policies associated with protection, and the implementation of true prevention. So thank you very much. <laughs>